Well, heat exchangers, and pardon the background music, YouTube was probably gonna tag me for that, or, you know, give me a strike or uh, demonetize my, this particular video because of the background music, but it is what it is. Um, since I'm waiting for him, and I made, this is my last shop of the day, which I always like to be at this shop, either for lunchtime or last, because this is another one of my favorite shops. I'm either being fed really well here for lunch, or I just enjoy the company here of like-minded people. Um, so let's get to this heat exchanger, heat exchanger, but it's not for air conditioning. This is for your turbocharger and this is your coolant for, uh, cooling it off from the turbocharger. This is for oil and this is for the oil filter. And this is go for the oil and the coolant to cool off the oil. Cause you know, oil could be three or 400 degrees and um, it shouldn't be. And so you have the coolant passages that you can see there with the coolant crusty in them. And then you either see the other one shiny there. And then we come over here, we see shiny, that's all oil. And then we see a little bit of crusty inside there, that's coolant. And they by bypass inside this plate heat exchanger. So I've explained this before, but half of the coolant, every one of those lines is what is called a plate. And every plate between every one, oil flows in one direction and then comes back out. Goes in, comes back out, every other one. Well, coolant runs in the other direction in the other, every other one. And so coolant goes up and goes over and out and they exchange the heat. Since the oil, let's say the oil is 350 degrees, but the coolant is only 190 degrees. 190 degrees is cold compared to 300 degrees. So the oil, the coolant that is cooler will absorb and subtract the heat out of the hot oil and you'll have cooler oil coming out the other side, cooling it. And plate heat exchangers with glycol, water is one of the most efficient heat mediums of transfer that's a liquid. And so glycol, now the higher your percentage of glycol, the lower the BT content extraction of your glycol, uh, if you put more glycol. So if you have a 50-50 mixed, you've reduced your water capacity and BTU content that could absorb. If it's 100% water, you can actually absorb more heat with pure water than you can glycol, but then you get in a problem with boiling, especially if you're doing a substance that's above boiling temperature, like 300 degree oil. So in this case here, that's how this plate heat exchanger and there's where the oil filter goes this is off of bmw and so is this and this works on the same principle so you see this looks like an evaporator in there and and you could theoretically kind of use this as an evaporator if you could keep it low pressure all the time because it wasn't meant for high pressure but say in theory this is the size of an evaporator say five eighths or seven eighths right if i put in refrigerant through an expansion valve right here and I had the expansion valve right here. And as I had my tiny little three eighths line or quarter inch line going to expansion valve with, I'll uh, say 200 degree, uh, uh, 220 PSI refrigerant went into a line and then it hit the expansion valve. And when it comes out the other side, it would be low pressure. And let's say 30 PSI would be in this. Well, this theoretically, if it never hit a high pressure, can work as an evaporator. And I would be squirting in a combination of semi-fluid, semi-vapor from the expansion valve and chill this down. And if I passed a high enough airflow out of there, this would become an evaporator just like a car. And I could have cold air, I could have hot air going in here, cold air coming back here. And this other one would go to the compressor and this turbocharged cooler would now become a evaporator and work exactly the same. Uh, other than it wasn't meant, when you turn off the engine and the pressure goes up, you'd probably go way above what this was designed for in pressure. Cause you could, when you're in a hot desert and it's 115 degrees outside where I was just at a place recently, I was 110, but 115, 120, under your dash, you could be 160 degrees and you would pop this. This was never meant to take that much care. It was only meant to take water pressure at 12 or 15 PSI. And I think this test pressure is only 21 PSI for test pressure from this factory from B&W. And so, but you can use this as an evaporator. Uh, you would have to do a lot of modifications. But this one was leaking 
see where the coolant was right at one of these seams right here so that's why this is being changed so this is water to oil plate heat exchanger this is a fin heat exchanger and this is air to water so you have uh coolant going through and you have air fins and that's how you exchange so oil through water air to water and then if you've seen some of the bmws i've done it goes refrigerant to water and there'll be another preheated exchanger what looks like this and it has the receiver i've done videos on it and it's a receiver dryer an expansion valve and a plate heat exchanger all in one unit and it exchanges glycol and refrigerant to get rid of the condenser and this is literally your condenser all right guys uh I think uh, he's lowering the car now, so I'm going to start getting my equipment ready to uh, get the BMW over here and um, enjoy some tunes. See you guys.